We call it to order. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, virtual meeting of the MEG Executive Committee is called to order. And Melissa, if you'll take a roll call. Sure, I'll go down a list of members. Please indicate if you're present. Mayor Giles. Present. Thank you. Mayor Weiss. Present. Thank you. Mayor Gallego. Mayor Tovar. Present. Thank you. Mayor Peterson. Mayor Hartke. Here. Thank you. And Chair Wires is present. So we do have a quorum of the executive committee. All right. Very good. Okay. So with that said, uh, I know I don't need to remind you, but I will anyway. If, if you would, please remember to mute yourself when you're not speaking. And even more so, please remember to unmute yourself when you do want to speak. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for everybody to hear. So with that call to the audience, do we have any, uh, any cards on call to audience? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We've received no comments for this item or any other item on the agenda. Oh, bless you. Okay, with that, let's move on to number three, approval of the consent agenda. Committee members um, may re uh, request an item be removed from the consent agenda prior to the action on the consent agenda. Members of the audience, which we don't have any, will be provided an opportunity to comment. Uh, cons consent items are marked with an asterisk uh, and action requested. Uh, if there's a... Uh, no members want to have anything heard separately. Uh, can I get an approval? Can I get a motion to approve? So move, Kevin Hartke. Second, Mayor Weiss. Okay, we have a motion, Kevin Hartke. Uh, a second from uh, from Ken. And then uh, uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, will you take a roll call, please? Yes, I'll call your name. Please indicate how you vote. Mayor Giles? Uh, aye. Mayor Weiss? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Gallego? Mayor Tovar? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Hartke? Yes. And Mr. Chair, how do you vote? Chairman, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. So that consent agenda passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the agenda items uh, 3A, 3B uh, are on the consent agenda. Uh, any member uh, have any questions on any of these? Hearing none. Okay, with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to items to be heard. Item number four, uh, uh, November 2020 general election results and outlook. Mr. McDonald from uh, Arizona, I'm sorry, the Policy Arizona, I'll provide a report on the results and the outlook from the November 3rd, 2020 general election. John. Uh, Mayor, Chairman, if I could, Nathan Sire. Uh, I understand John McDonald is joining as we speak. So he should be on momentarily. Apologize for that. Hey, no problem. Okay. John, are you there? Here it comes. Mr. McDonald. I see you're on mute. There he is. Okay. Mr. McDonald, you're on mute right now. Bottom left of your screen, sir. There you go. There we go. Sorry, my computer is being very slow today. So, hi, Mayor. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, you have a report for us? <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, Hello to everybody here uh, on the call. Sorry for my computer's uh, tardiness, but for, I just uploaded a new system and now it's my computer is much slower than before. So I don't think that's the point, but anyway, <clears throat> um, wanted to update you on where things stand vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Arizona legislature. Uh, I know this is something that uh, you're all at least generally familiar with, so I won't uh, bore you with all of the background information that I might do in another setting, but um, to maybe summarize where we are, uh, we are in a, much the same place coming up in January of 21 as we are currently. Uh, there is a good deal of um, speculation that one or both of the houses of the Arizona legislature in this past election could go from Republican majority to Democrat majority. Uh, that did not happen. Uh, there was a good deal of speculation because of 
you know, the nature of the elections on a national level, how much that would uh, translate into the, uh, the state level and local level. And of course, at the national level here, uh, we've seen results at the top of the ticket that did favor the Democrat. Uh, going down the ticket, I think there was a, a good deal of reasonable speculation that uh, the Democrats would be able to flip some of these seats in some of the districts around the state uh, in a way that hadn't been done in quite a long time. Uh, the, the long and short of it is that didn't happen uh, in the Senate. I think it, it, I think it turned out in the Senate about the way most people thought, which was that the Democrats did gain a seat. Uh, Senator Brophy McGee, Kate Brophy McGee, who's a longtime legislator here from the Central Phoenix area, uh, lost her seat to Christine Marsh, a Democrat. Uh, that was something that was widely expected, though it was a very close race. Uh, Christine Marsh did come out on top by a few hundred votes. Uh, so the Democrats did gain a seat, which means the state Senate will go from 17 uh, Republicans to 13, uh, which is currently 17 Republicans, 13 Democrats will go to 16, 14. However, I think the difference uh, in the Senate is, uh, is really not so much in the numerical change, though that's certainly a factor. But in the Senate, remember that two of the Republicans in the Senate currently in the Republican caucus are Heather Carter uh, and Kate Brophy McGee. Both of them would be widely considered as moderate Republicans and uh, which, which made the dynamics of that 17 member caucus in the Republican, or excuse me, in the Senate, um, you know, quite different than it's going to be in this coming year where you have only 16 Republicans as opposed to 17 but those 16 are going to be a pretty solid conservative majority. There aren't uh, any, you know, what I think most people would consider moderates in that group. Uh, now, it, it is a new Senate and you never know how personalities are going to play out. But I think the long and short of it is, though the, the Senate got a little bit less Republican, it also got a little bit more conservative in its majority. So uh, that that's the long and short of the Senate. It's going to be 16-14, which is obviously a very narrow margin. You need 16 votes to pass anything in the Senate. Uh, but uh, that 16-member majority, I think, is going to be a fairly solid block of Republicans without a whole lot of dissenters in the group, or at least that's the way it looks on paper. In the House, it's a really simple explanation. The Democrats were again, speculated to have a very good shot at winning, you know, anywhere from two to four to six different districts where they had competitive races and good candidates uh, and numbers seem to be favoring uh, the Democrats in those races. It just didn't turn out that way. Uh, the Democrats picked up one seat in the West Valley, uh, but lost another seat in the uh, far West Valley Yuma district. Uh, so they, they gained one and lost one, which means 31 Republicans, 29 Democrats currently, 31 Republicans, 29 Democrats beginning in January of, uh, of 21. Um, Rusty Bowers was, is the current Speaker of the House. He will be the Speaker of the House beginning in January 21, a little bit new leadership team for him. Uh, on the Senate side, uh, Karen Fan is the current president and she will remain the president beginning in January 21, along with her uh, existing leadership team, Rick Gray uh, from the West Valley. Senator Gray will be the majority leader. Senator Sonny Borelli from the Mojave County area will be uh, the majority whip. Uh, on the minority side in the Senate uh, has been David Bradley was the president for, uh, excuse me, minority leader for the last two years. Uh, he will be replaced by longtime legislator Rebecca Rios, who will be the new Senate minority leader in the House, uh, Charlene Fernandez uh, was the minor is the minority leader in the House currently. Uh, she has chosen not to pursue that position again. Uh, uh, Representative Reg Bolding uh, from the West Phoenix area will be the new minority leader. Some changes there in the minority side uh, on the leadership team. But I think in the House, you're going to see uh, the body probably function much the same way it does right now. Uh, Rusty Bowers is a speaker and you've got a very solid 31 member uh, Republican majority that uh, the past two years had very little, if any, uh, dissenters in the ranks. 
many, many bills in the House over the last two years passed with uh, the majority 31 votes that you need to pass um, and 29 Democrats voting no. That happened a lot. And I expect that it's going to be, uh, that's gonna carry the day here in the House again, beginning in January 21. So just to summarize quickly, um, the legislature in January 2021 is going to be much the same as it is right now. Um, ironically, uh, though the state is getting a lot of attention for the fact that uh, the top of the ticket in terms of the presidential race and the Senate race went Democrat, uh, when it came to when it comes to the lower uh, down ticket races, um, those mostly went Republican. And the uh, the 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 irony is that Arizona is being looked at a little bit and getting a lot of attention for the Democrat side, but in the, at the legislature, it's actually going to be about the same when it comes to Republicans versus Democrats. And in fact, on the Senate side, a more um, a more conservative majority than you had before. So that's where we stand. That's the lay of the land at the Capitol. I'm happy to answer any questions, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Sean. Uh, anybody have any questions? Will you just quickly take us to the transportation committees? Um, hi, Mayor Gallego. Yes, uh, transportation committees have yet to be um, set in both bodies. Uh, I think Senator Livingston in the Senate, uh, if he wants to be the transportation chair, and I suspect he does because he's certainly been doing a lot of work, as you know, in the interim, uh, trying to gather information. I suspect he will be the transportation chair, but that has not been officially announced yet. We expect that to be sometime in the next couple of weeks, could be as early as this week, but they haven't announced it. And same on the House side. Of course, it's been Noel, Noel Campbell from the Prescott area for the last two years has been the House Transportation Chair. He will not is not returning to the legislature. Um, uh, yes. Representative Iasucci from Mojave County was the vice chair in the House. Uh, it's unclear at this point whether he wants that role as chair or whether it will go to somebody else in the majority. We just don't know. So. They have not announced those yet. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Thanks, Sean. Okay, Thank you, everybody. We're, we're moving right along here today. Uh, are there any uh, requests for future agenda items uh, from our membership? Hearing none. Okay, and any comments or announcements from the membership? Uh, Mayor, just a comment for me. Uh, uh, Mayor Tovar was elected to the Corporation Commission, and I know her time on this board is going to end, but I want to thank her for all of her leadership, not only on this board, but also in the West Valley, and I hope she stays in contact with us. She's not going away. She's just going. <laughs> well, I know. But... <laughs> Moving on up. <laughs> Anna, did you, did you want to say anything? No, I just want to say thank you guys, and you're right. I'm not going far, and I'm always going to be an advocate for our city. So please reach out to me uh, and keep me keep me informed as well, too. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Eric, uh, did you, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Mayor. Thank you. Also, so congratulations to Mayor Tovar and congratulations to Mayor Weiss on a very successful uh, race. Awesome. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to do my state of the city and try to push for Prop 400 extension as a priority. So, great, well, good deal. Okay, so uh, my only other question, Eric, do you have anything that you need to throw in? No, sir. We're all set. Thank you. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody. Uh, this is a good meeting. It's a quick meeting, and uh, everybody stay safe. Uh, we don't see you before Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.